Chapter Fourteen. Food. Like a car, the human body needs fuel to function. For human bodies, the word nutrients is commonly used in place of fuels to describe the substance that provide nourishment, which the body needs for growth, for the maintenance of life, and for optimal health. The human body is a collection of fluids and cells. Cells make up tissues that, in turn, compose organs. The structural units in the body that serve a particular function. Different organs, such as the heart, bone, and brain, have different nutritional requirements, and the nutritional requirements for the whole body reflect the needs of its individual parts. Nutrients can be divided into two categories: macronutrients and micronutrients. Protein, carbohydrate, and lipid, also known as fat. Are the three major macronutrients required by the human body in large amount. All three are essential to a healthy diet. They are examples of biomolecules, the molecules that support life. A healthy diet also includes micronutrients such as vitamins and minerals, which are substances required in small amount in the human diet. Note that the vitamins are organic substances, whereas minerals are inorganic substances. Protein is present in meat and dairy products, and it is also present in vegetarian foods such as beans, legumes, soy, and nuts. When these protein sources are limited, another good protein source is insects. Insects provide as much protein as meat and dairy, but a lot less fat. Insects can be raised much more efficiently than livestock and without significant environmental impact. Proteins are polymers of amino acids. Amino acids are small organic molecules that connect together to form a long chain-like protein polymers. The figure below shows the molecular structure of a protein chain and the amino acids within it. The backbone of the protein chain is highlighted in yellow. All amino acids have similar structures. They differ from each other only in the identity of the side chain they contain. The pink circles highlight the side chains that branch off the main protein chain. Each amino acid is bonded to the next, one after the other, at the point where a carbon atom attaches to its neighboring nitrogen atom via an amide bond. These links are indicated with a green slash in the molecule, are also known as the peptide bonds. Peptide bonds can be made and broken. In this way, amino acids, the monomers. Can be assembled into proteins, the polymers, and the proteins can be disassembled back into amino acids. There are 20 different amino acids are commonly found in proteins. The figure below shows the amino acid sequence of insulin. Each amino acid is identified with its three-letter designation. Notice that this protein actually contains two individual protein chains. They are held together by disulfide bonds. As highlighted in green color, disulfide bonds always connect at the amino acid cysteine, abbreviated as CYF. They are a common feature of proteins, and they are important because they connect protein chains together. Amino acids can be divided into two groups: essential and non-essential amino acids. There are 11 non-essential amino acids. The adult human body. Can produce these amino acids on its own, and they are nine essential amino acids. They are deemed essential not because they play a more important role in proteins that do the non-essential amino acids, but because they must be included in the adult human diet for humans to survive. The human body doesn't know how to make these amino acids, so we must consume them instead. In the twenty amino acids. Shown here on the right, the part shown in pink is the side chain that extends from the protein backbone. The atoms of each amino acid that become part of the backbone are highlighted in yellow. The names of the essential amino acids are highlighted in green. The rest are the non-essential amino acids. The three-letter abbreviation for each amino acid is given in parentheses. When we say that a diet should include a source of complete protein, we mean that it should include all of the essential amino acids in adequate quantities. Most meat and meat products, such as dairy, 
eggs, and soy are complete proteins. Most plant-based foods are incomplete proteins. Proteins are polymers that can be formed from any combination of 20 amino acid building blocks. So an enormous number of different proteins are found in nature. An impressive variety of sequences are available, and the sequencing of the amino acids in a given protein provides specific instructions that tell the protein how to fold into a unique three-dimensional shape. The amino acid side chains interact with one another, and those interactions stabilize the compact and folded three-dimensional structure. As in the insulin example, the two chains are connected by two disulfide bonds. The chains within a protein interact with one another and begin to fold up into shapes. Disulfide bonds can also link different regions of the same chain. Linkages play a big role in the way long protein chains fold into more compact structures. Proteins that fold and curl up in these ways are referred to as globular proteins. The name suggests that its shape is somewhat spherical. Each globular protein folds up into a distinctive three-dimensional shape, and that shape is dictated largely by its amino acid sequence. Globular proteins exist in a variety of shapes because it is often the protein surface that determines what the protein does. This means that proteins can serve a variety of functions. For instance, the figure on the left is a space-filling model of bovine chymotrypanogen. The contours of the protein often serve as a bending site for other molecules. The figure on the right is a ribonuclease 3 protein. A red molecule docks in the blue ribonuclease 3 protein molecule. After it docks, the protein cuts it into two pieces and then releases it. Proteins serve many functions in the body. When proteins facilitate or catalyze chemical reactions, we call them enzymes. When they are chemical messenger molecules that travel through the blood, we call them hormones. When they are produced and sent out in response to an infection, we call them antibodies. The biomolecules that carry and store oxygen in our blood, hemoglobin and myoglobin respectively, are also proteins. Proteins can be divided into two broad categories, globular proteins and structural proteins. So far, all proteins mentioned are globular proteins. Structural proteins do not have a globular shape. Instead, they are often fibrous or rope-like. The structural proteins have mechanical roles. In living organisms, structural proteins have protective jobs such as skin and fingernails. Structural proteins are also the basis of hard-wearing materials, such as the horn of a renal. They can also be used to do mechanical work, such as in contractile systems, which are the basis for muscle movement in humans and other animals. DNA, the oxyribonucleic acid, contains the instructions for making protein. DNA belongs to the class of biological molecules called nucleic acids. DNA is similar to protein in that it has a backbone with appendages branching off it. In proteins, the appendages are the side chain of amino acids. In DNA, each appendage is a nitrogenous base, sometimes referred to simply as a base. There are four different bases in DNA each one represented with a different one-letter symbol. The four bases are guanine, as simple as G, cytosine, C, thymine, T, adenine, A. The backbone in DNA is made up of only these four different nucleotide building blocks. Nucleotides are monomers that bound to form DNA polymer chains. Each nucleotide has three parts a phosphorus containing group and a sugar part make up the backbone and nitrogenous bases dangle from the backbone. DNA has two strands which are connected by complementary base pairs. The four bases on one strand, G, C, T, and A, 
connect with the four bases on the other strand by hydrogen bonds. Each time a G appears on one strand, it pairs with a C on the other strand. Each time a T appears on one strand, it pairs with an A on the other strand. A ladder analogy is a useful way to visualize a DNA double helix. A long chain consisting of two connected backbones resembling a ladder. The bases act as the rungs of the ladder, and the backbones act as the two vertical pieces. The two strands that make up the double helix each have different ends. We call one end the 5 prime, the other end the 3 prime end. As shown in the figure to the right, the two strands run in opposite directions. The one on the left goes from 5 prime to 3 prime, while the one on the right goes from 3 prime to 5 prime, from top to bottom. We indicate the direction that the strand is going by adding these numbers to the sequence. For example, if the left strand is 5 prime C T A T C G 3 prime, then its complementary strand, the one on the right, would be 3 prime G A T A G C 5 prime. Imagine two people holding the ends of a flexible ladder and starting twisting it. The resulting shape is a right-handed double helix, the shape of DNA. The structure on the far right is a space-filling model of a DNA molecule. How does a strand of DNA become a protein chain? The short answer is genes within DNA are transcribed into RNA first, which is then translated into protein. Let's take a closer look at the transcription first. The DNA first unwinds and unzips. The unzipped section of DNA is used as a template to create a strand of ribonucleic acid, or RNA. RNA includes the base uracil, symbol U, in place of thymine, symbol T. During the transcription process, the A on DNA makes a base pair with the U on the new RNA strand. The new RNA strand is now ready to make a protein. To translate a message that uses four bases to one that uses 20 amino acids, the cell uses the genetic code. The code works by equating each group of three RNA bases, called a triplet, with a specific amino acid. For every RNA triplet, there is a corresponding amino acid as shown in the table on the right. For every three nucleotides of the RNA strand, one specific amino acid is created and added to a growing protein chain in which the amino acids are connected with peptide bonds. When one of the stop triplets is reached, the protein is complete and no more amino acids are added. The process is called translation, which takes the RNA nucleotides and translates them into amino acids in the protein. As the new protein begins to form, it changes from an unfurled floppy chain into a tightly folded protein. The diagram on this page summarizes how DNA is transcribed into RNA, which is then translated into protein. An unzipped section of DNA is used as a template to create a strand of RNA in the process of transcription. RNA is used as a template to form a protein. Each triplet of bases in the RNA sequence calls for an amino acid. The protein chain grows until the last amino acid is added. Our high-quality modern produce that withstands long shipping with changing temperatures, long shelf life, and harbors no insects are in part due to genetic engineering. Genetic engineering technology allows scientists to manipulate the DNA of plants, animals, and many other organisms. A genetically modified organism, GMO, has altered DNA. This alteration affects the proteins the DNA makes. The secret behind any kind of genetic engineering is cutting and pasting pieces of DNA from one organism into another organism. Any organism containing one or more genes 
that came from a different organism is referred to as a transgenic organism. The terms GMO and transgenic are often used interchangeably. Two genetic modifications are frequently employed in modern agriculture. The first of these involves splicing a gene that confers a resistance to insects into a plant's DNA. The gene comes from a bacterium called Bt that naturally lives in soil. This bacterium produces a protein that is toxic to certain insects. GMO plants that are Bt modified have the gene from that toxic protein spliced into their DNA, and the transgenic plant is protected over its lifespan from the insects that are killed by the toxic protein. The second common genetic modification confers tolerance to herbicides. Herbicide-resistant GMOs are often labeled with the letters HT. In the US, for example, most soybeans are HT soybeans. These transgenic plants contain a gene for herbicide resistance built into their genetic material. When HT plants grow, they are often overcome by weeds, but HT crops can be sprayed with a herbicide that kills all the plants except those with the resistance gene. One herbicide that many plants have been designed to tolerate is Roundup, a broad-spectrum herbicide that made by the Monsanto Corporation. The active ingredient in Roundup is a chemical called glyphosate. The glyphosate molecule inhibits one of the steps in the pathway that plants use to make certain amino acids. These amino acids are essential to plant growth. So once the process is blocked, the plants cannot grow. Because this pathway occurs only in plants and bacteria, glyphosate is harmless to animals. When Roundup is applied to a soybean crop, it kills the wheat and leaves the HT soybeans untouched. GMO crops have been more and more prevalent in the United States since being introduced in the 1990s. Below is a graph of the percentage of various crops that are genetically modified today. Benefits of using GMOs include but are not limited to better crop yields, higher vitamin content in food, citrix that is resistant to disease, coffee without caffeine, tobacco without nicotine, animals grow twice as fast or large in size. Despite the benefits of using GMOs, there are certainly some controversies around it. Many people are opposed to growth of transgenic crops. Some religious protesters insist that the modification of genetic material is morally wrong. Environmental groups are concerned about inadequate monitoring of transgenic plants. They are concerned over increased herbicide usage and the safety of glyphosate. What's worse, reports have shown that Roundup-resistant weeds are now growing on more than 10 million acres of farmland in the U.S. There is an obesity epidemic among children and adults in the U.S. Roughly a third of Americans are obese, and about 17% of children are obese in the nation. Obesity is determined from body mass index, aka BMI. The formula is given as below, BMI equal to the body mass in pounds times 703 divided by the height in inches squared. U.S. dietary habits are changing over the decades, leading to increases in obesity. The U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Department of Health and Human Services put out nutritional guidelines for U.S. citizens every five years in an effort to help citizens eat in a healthy way. The food pyramid was promoted by the U.S. government in the 1990s. The food pyramid has since been replaced by the My Play diagram which illustrate what a healthy meal should look like. If we compare my plate to the food pyramid, it is clear that the recommended portion of some food have shifted. Dairy is now represented by a glass of milk, but other dairy products such as cheese and eggs can make up the protein section on the plate. Fruits and vegetables now take up half of the plate. All of the bread, rice, and pasta products 
which made up the largest segment of the food pyramid, are now represented by the quadrant of the plate labeled grain. As my plate demonstrates, a gradual shift is taking place away from recommendations that we eat more bread and grain products as the food pyramid suggested it, and toward recommendations that we eat less. All grains are composed mainly of carbohydrates. Some carbohydrates are healthy, others are not. Most carbohydrates, which are macronutrients, are natural polymers too. Saccharides are the monomers that make up carbohydrates. Carbohydrates made up of only one monomer unit are monosaccharides, and those containing two monomer units are disaccharides. For molecules containing more monomers, we use the term polysaccharide. A polysaccharide can contain thousands of monomers. The flowchart outlines the common terminology used in carbohydrate chemistry. The carbohydrate refers to all saccharides, large and small. A sugar, or simple sugar, is given to carbohydrates with only one or two monomer units. So the term sugar is a synonym for both monosaccharide and disaccharide. In everyday usage, the term sugar refers to table sugar, a specific disaccharide called sucrose. Candy is composed mainly of simple sugars, such as sucrose. The term complex carbohydrate refers to a polysaccharide containing hundreds or thousands of individual saccharide monomers. Complex carbohydrates are the primary ingredient in foods, such as potatoes, rice, and bread. The term grains refers to foods that are composed mainly of complex carbohydrates. This includes foods made from things such as wheat, rice, barley, and cornmeal. Whole grain is intact and unprocessed, like the grain of wheat shown to the right. A single whole grain includes parts called the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. When you eat food that contains whole grain, such as whole wheat bread, or oatmeal, or brown rice, it includes all of these parts. The bran and the germ are nutritious and help maintain a healthy digestive tract. When a grain is processed, only the endosperm remains. Foods made from the endosperm alone, called refined grains, have a softer texture and are more easily processed. They include white pasta, white bread, and many kinds of crackers, noodles, and tortillas. These foods lack the nutritional content of whole grains because they have no bran and no germ. Digestion breaks down complex carbohydrates into monosaccharides and disaccharides. When you take a piece of bread and begin to chew, the molecules in the food begin to break down as soon as the food hits the saliva in your mouth. Saliva contains an enzyme called amylase that chops the long chain polysaccharides in the bread into small pieces. When the well-chewed piece of bread hits your stomach, the amylase from your saliva keeps breaking it down. Eventually, the acids in your stomach and other enzymes act on the smaller and smaller remnants of the original polysaccharide. These enzymes are capable of breaking down disaccharides to monosaccharides, such as fructose glucose, and galactose. These monosaccharides are small enough to be absorbed into the cells that lines the intestinal wall. Fructose, glucose, and galactose, all these basic carbohydrate structures that contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, they all have the same molecular formula of C6H12O6. Some carbohydrates are not broken down easily by the human digestive tract. Nevertheless, these carbohydrates play an important role in the human body. Carbohydrates that are not digested make up the dietary fiber. Dietary fiber, such as the bran obtained from whole grain, is solid, undigested food that helps maintain the health of the digestive tract. It does this by keeping moisture in the gut and helping to move waste through to its final destination. Human beings store energy in the form of fat. Sanitary lifestyles make it easy to accumulate too much fat. Estimates suggest that 
as much as 10% of our annual healthcare budget is spent on treating problems related directly to obesity, and that the risk of death for obese people is 50 to 100% higher than the normal weight public. For those who are gaining weight, the energy they consume each day in the form of food is greater than the energy they expend through activities in one day. When excess fat is consumed, the portion not used as fuel is stored in adipose tissue. When excess carbohydrate are consumed, the leftovers are converted to fat. This fat also goes into long-term storage in the adipose tissue. Of those four major classes of biomolecules, nucleic acids, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, fats are the only ones that are not polymers. The word fat is colloquial, and it is used to describe the subset of biological molecules called lipids, which are defined as biomolecules that dissolve readily in solvents that are not polar. Lipids are generally hydrophobic or water-fearing because they are not polar like water. Rather, they contain long hydrocarbon chains that are very nonpolar. The simplest lipids are fatty acids. Every fatty acid molecule is composed of a long hydrocarbon chain with a carboxylic acid functional group attached at one end. The presence of a carboxylic acid group is usually a signal that a molecule is polar. Because this functional group contains electronegative atoms that cause the electron density in the molecule to be lopsided. However, the hydrocarbon chains in fatty acids are so long that the nonpolar character of the chain dominates the polar character of the carboxylic acid functional group. Because the nonpolar character is dominant, fatty acids dissolve in nonpolar solvents and are classified as lipids. Fatty acids can be classified as saturated or unsaturated. Fatty acids with only single bonds between carbon atoms are referred to as saturated. Those that contain one or more carbon-carbon double bonds are unsaturated. Monounsaturated fatty acids contain one double bond, whereas polyunsaturated fatty acids contain more than one double bond. Saturated and unsaturated fats are not equally healthy. According to the American Heart Association, eating foods that contain high levels of saturated fats significantly increases the risk of heart disease and stroke. Unsaturated fatty acids are better for your health than saturated fatty acids. The physical properties of a fatty acid are dramatically affected by the number of carbon-carbon double bonds it contains. The diagram on the previous slide shows some of the fatty acids found in the human diet. It is clear that as the number of double bonds in the fatty acid increases, the melting point decreases. A double bond in a fatty acid chain causes a kink. When a fatty acid changes from the liquid phase to the solid phase, the molecules get closer together and pack into a firm solid. When there is a kink in the fatty acid molecule, this packing process is less efficient. Usually, the more kinks there are in the fatty acid, the more difficult it is for the molecules to pack in tightly against one another. Butter, margarine, salad oils, and the other lipids we commonly consider to be food all contain a mixture of fatty acids. In non-scientific conversations, we call these mixtures oils if they are liquids at room temperature and fats if they are solids at room temperature. The firmer the product is, the higher is percentage of saturated fatty acids. In the human bodies, lipids are stored in the form of triglyceride. Each triglyceride is made up of one molecule of glycerol combined with three fatty acid molecules. Triglycerides are the primary component of adipose cells, the cells in the body where fat is stored. Adipose tissue acts as an insulator for animals that live in very cold environments. When energy is needed in the body, the links between glycerol and fatty acids in triglyceride molecule can be broken, releasing the fatty acids, which can then be used as fuel for the body.
Question 1. What type of nutrients are proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids? A. Macronutrients B. Trace nutrients C. Micronutrients D. Quantitative nutrients Please pause your video here. The correct answer is A. Macronutrients The human body requires these nutrients in large amounts. Therefore, they are the macronutrients. Question 2. Which of the following is not a micronutrient? A. Calcium B. Iron C. Lipid D. Niacin Please pause your video here. The correct answer is C. Lipids Micronutrients are substances required in small amounts in human diet, such as vitamins and minerals. In here, calcium and iron are the minerals, and niacin is the vitamin. Question 3. In the body, what are the monomers that make up the protein polymer? A. Disulfide bonds B. Lipids C. Peptide bonds D. Amino acids Please pause your video here. The correct answer is D. Amino acids. Amino acids are small organic molecules that are connected together to form long chain-like protein polymers. Question 4. In the diet, most meat and meat products contain blank, meaning they contain all of the essential amino acids in adequate quantities. A. Complete proteins. B. Incomplete proteins. C. Complete fats. D. Incomplete fats. Please pause your video here. The correct answer is A. Complete proteins. Most meat products are complete proteins that contain all of the essential amino acids, and most plant-based foods are incomplete proteins. Question 5. Which are globular proteins that catalyze chemical reactions in the body? A. RNA B. DNA C. Lipids D. Enzymes Please pause your video here. The correct answer is D. Enzymes. When proteins facilitate or catalyze chemical reactions, we call them enzymes. Question 6. What is the attractive force between complementary base pairs in a DNA molecule that acts as the rounds of the letter? A. Phosphate bonding B. Covalent bonding C. Hydrogen bonding D. Ionic bonding Please pause your video here. The correct answer is C. Hydrogen bonding. DNA has two strands that are connected by complementary base pairs. The four bases on one strand are connected with the four bases on the other strand by hydrogen bonding. Question 7. The long nucleotide sequence on any strand of DNA is divided into smaller segments called blank, each of which provides instructions for making a specific protein needed by the body. A genes, B, RNAs, C, transcriptions, D, polymers. Please pause your video here. The correct answer is A, genes. The segment of a nucleic acid that codes for a specific protein is genes. Question 8. Which is the correct order for the production of protein beginning with a DNA sequence? A, step 1. The triplets in RNA are translated. Step 2. DNA unzips. Step 3. A small piece of RNA is created from the DNA template. Step 4. A new protein chain is made. B. Step 1. A new protein chain is made. Step 2. A small piece of RNA is created from the DNA template. Step 3. The triplets in RNA are translated. Step 4. DNA unzips. C. Step 1. DNA unzips. Step 2. A small piece of RNA is created from the DNA template. Step 3. The triplets in RNA are translated. Step 4. A new protein chain is made. D. Step 1. The triplet in RNA are translated. Step 2. 
a new protein chain is made. Step 3. DNA unzips. Step 4. A small piece of RNA is created from the DNA template. Please pause your video here. The correct answer is C. An unzipped section of DNA is used as a template to create a strand of RNA in the process of transcription. RNA is used as a template to form a protein. Each triplet basis in the RNA sequence calls for an amino acid. The protein chain grows until the last amino acid is added. Please refer back to slide number 20 for information. Question 9. The shelf life of some types of produce is extended by manipulating the DNA of the organism. What type of organism is created? A. Organisms of genetic modification. B. Genetically superior organisms. C. Superorganisms. D. Genetically modified organisms. Please pause your video here. The correct answer is D. Genetically modified organisms. An organism with a modified genetic material is a GMO. Question 10. According to figure 14.16, approximately how many times more soybeans were produced from GMO crops in 2012 compared to 1996? A. 10 times more. B. 7 times more. C. 5 times more. D. 3 times more. Please pause your video here. The correct answer is A, 10 times more. We're going to look at the blue curve, the HT soybeans. In 1996, the number is right here, is little less than 10%. By 2012, the number is about 93. If you use 90 divided by 10, that's 9 times. But we have 93, and then going to divide by a smaller number than 10, so you will have 10 times or more. Question 11. Which are globular proteins that act as chemical messengers in the body? A. Hormones. B. DNA. C. Lipids. D. Enzymes. Please pause your video here. The correct answer is A. Hormones. When proteins are chemical messenger molecules that travel through the blood, we call them hormones. Question 12. What molecules store the instruction for making every protein in the body? A. Hormones B. DNA C. RNA D. Enzymes Please pause your video here. The correct answer is B. DNA DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, contains the instruction for making protein in the body. Question 13. Which food group was reduced the most? when comparing the 1990s food pyramid to the current U.S. government's recommendations with my plate. A. Fruit B. Vegetables C. Proteins D. Greens Please pause your video here. The correct answer is D. Greens As you can see in the food pyramid, greens is the largest portion in here. However, in the new my plate, green is about a quarter of a plate. Question 14. Which is a polysaccharide containing hundreds or thousands of individual saccharide monomers? A. Complex carbohydrate. B. Sugar. C. Dietary fiber. D. Fatty acids. Please pause your video here. The correct answer is A. Complex carbohydrate. The terms polysaccharide and complex carbohydrate are often used interchangeably. Question 15. Fill in the blanks. When humans consume excess blank, the leftover are converted into blank that are stored in the adipose tissue. A. Fat. Carbohydrates. B. Carbohydrates. Fat. C. Proteins. Carbohydrates. D. Carbohydrates, proteins. Please pause your video here. The correct answer is B. Carbohydrates, fats. The excess amount of carbohydrates are converted to fats first. Then, the fats go into long-term storage in adipose tissue. Question 16. 
What is monounsaturated fat? A. A fatty acid with a carboxylic acid is a monounsaturated fat. B. A fatty acid with single carbon to carbon bonds is a monounsaturated fat. C. A fatty acid with two double carbon to carbon bonds is a monounsaturated fat. D. A fatty acid with one double carbon to carbon bond is a monounsaturated fat. Please pause your video here. The correct answer is D. A fatty acid with one double carbon to carbon bond is a monounsaturated fat. Unsaturation indicates a carbon carbon double bond. Saturated meaning they're all carbon carbon single bond. And then from the name, it says mono, meaning just one carbon-carbon double bond.